Welcome to the Beyond Jiu Jitsu podcast. I'm your co host, Kieran Lefebvre, the blue belt under Adam Childs. What's up? I'll let you have your intros back after my two appalling attempts. Mm, they were pretty abysmal. But this my is episode. My second one was all right. Come on, bro. Oh, episode yeah. It was, it was, it was okay. I'll let give the, you a pass. Let the people, Soft pass. Let the people speak. Yeah, let the people decide. This is episode number 74. I've done my first comp. Now what? What do we do? Do your second comp. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Now that that's out of the way. <laughs> but I wanted to kick off this uh, episode. Uh, well, actually, it was your idea, AC, yeah, to kick off. Ideas. Shut up. Uh, Can't say that on air. Rewind it. <laughs> Take it back. Uh, Apparently, people are calling me that now. AC. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you told me on YouTube anyway. Yeah, yeah. YouTube comments, messages. And uh, I've, I've gotten the nickname Special Case. So a special K. So some people just like message special K. Shout out to those people. But then um, a couple of people, I think, uh, it, it got started by one individual. You know who you are. But he was like, nah, it's, it needs to be special case because it sounds more dangerous or something like that. It's pretty funny. It makes it sound like you have some mental yeah. disability. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. Um, which, you know, anyway, moving on. I wanted to kick off this, uh, well, Adam wanted to kick off this episode with a bit of a story so last the weekend just gone we're recording this on a wednesday as we do and the sunday just gone we had a competition we'd spoken about this competition on air a few times like when we're talking about comp prep leading up to a competition yada yada so this is like one of the bigger comps in sydney called the sydney uh sydney championship i think colloquially known as sydney cup something along those lines uh, but i mean they will always have different brand names under the ibjjf rule set so in one of my matches in Nogi. So this is Nogi. I don't want to talk about Gi right now. It, it, it didn't go too well. well in my I want to talk about the Yeah, gi. we'll talk about Gi later. <laughs> uh, but in Nogi, Nogi went great uh, for me. Uh, in my first match, it was over in about 30 seconds. Poor bastard. Um, snapped down, took his back, choked him. Oh, yeah, really I clean. did see that match. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just so quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was good fun. I enjoyed Blink it. Blink of an eye. It's kind of like, it reminds me of that meme. And he was so disappointed, the poor bastard. But it reminds me of that meme. It's like, why would I pay $100 to get subbed in 20 seconds? It's like, yeah, he, he kind of did. Poor bugger. Uh, but it means it's got to happen to someone. Not only that, he also had to drive to Blacktown. Yeah. <laughs> which is really far away from where we live. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to that guy. Um, didn't get his name. Anyway, uh, in the, I think it was the second or maybe third. I can't recall. I think it was the second match. Um, it didn't go too well at the start. After missing this, the takedown, I think I think I might have gotten the takedown. Or, and anyway, it ended up this guy was on my back, and I was in a pretty deep rear naked choke. Yeah, you pretty you pretty much hit the takedown like a sort of hip toss slash yeah. uchimata yep. sort of takedown, which I never do in the gym, which is really no. weird. <laughs> it's so weird that I did it. Hence <laughs> why when you did it, you just were like, "Well, I guess he'll just take my back now." Yeah, and you just like got rolled over and. Yep. That yeah. happens. Anyway, go on. Um, so I, I ended up in a pretty fucking deep rear naked choke. Like he had it locked in. It was, I had like two hands on his choking arm and my chin was just enough in the way. But don't get me wrong. It was choking and he was trying to extend. He was trying to like, you know, get under the chin, right up, right up. Like it was, it was a tough spot. It was fucking hurting. And I had to, uh, I was giving the thumbs up to the ref. Like I'm good. Don't, don't call it. Even though I was gurgling and shit, you know, I've, sometimes the refs call it when you're like, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. making noises. So I was like giving him thumbs up, like don't fucking don't call it. And he was like, giving him thumbs up back. Like you're good. Uh, anyway, the point of this story is at one point I looked over to Adam. He's on the sideline staring me dead in the eye and the disappointment on his <laughs> face was like, he was looking at it like you motherfucker. Like, I can't believe you're losing again. <laughs> I, I was like looking at it like, oh, oh he just, Adam you, counted me out. Adam full just counted me out. Looked at this I situation. Was like, you're walked, done. I almost walked away. Walked away in shame. But I mean, just, just the look. I'll never forget the look in your eyes and the look. You couldn't hide it on your face. You're just like, <laughs> You pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> my face said it all. Your face did say it all. And I was I was actually telling my mate about it. Like later that day, I, I called him whatever, recounting the situation. And that that's what I emphasized, like the look of disappointment in your eyes. It was uh, palpable. However, what ended up happening, I escaped that rear naked choke. You did. I, we, we ended up in close guard. I like guard. to think my disappointment spurred that on. I was never, I was not going to tap. It was hurting. Like it was choking a little bit, but I was not going out. It wasn't deep enough. To like. I was not going to fucking While tap. I was watching it, I was, the thought that was in my head, 
I knew you weren't going to tap as well. Like I was disappointed because I was looking at it going, he's about to go out. He's going to go out. No. Because I was like, I knew you wouldn't tap. No. But I was like, I was disappointed that you got there and then I was like, he's going to go I only out. tapped the joint locks in comps. No fucking jokes because you can always escape. Well, sometimes you can. <laughs> and this time I fucking did. So what ended up happening is I I broke his, his, his grips basically were, were gone. Like he, he, he gassed his arms, I'm assuming. Um, I, I reset, I was able to get my back to the mat, spun over into his clothes guard. We reset into the middle. I then passed him through standing standing up. I passed him, took his back and choked that fucker out. Rear yeah. naked choke. Well, it was actually a fulcrum rear naked choke, but still it was a rear naked choke back. And, the, and because of like how the match played out, he was like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> he was real disappointed after. I can't remember if it was that, match or there was another one where you were taking someone's back and i remember yelling um i've got a very bad coaching voice i lose my voice straight away I actually this have was on, in the final i know who you're talking about right. yeah. i actually have on my phone at the moment like saved on a tab uh we've spoken about this before like the the frog voice thing in the military yeah, i actually, had to do it yeah i actually yeah. have it up here like um Apparently, sorry, so I got it wrong. Frog voice is the name they give to the people who can't yell correctly. And, yeah, lose, right. and then, you know, they lose their voice. So only a little croak comes yeah. out. Uh, but I've actually got it up here, like, so I can try and improve my ability to essentially vocal training. Right? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Anyway, I remember there was one bit and I just remember yelling, Karen, fucking rip it. Yeah. Rip it. Yeah, it was, <laughs> oh, that was the key match. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, I think uh, it was. Um, uh, anyway, regardless. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was that was an interesting uh, match. Yeah, like the there was a definite overall like disappointment at the the competition for me. Um, mm. Do you want to get that door? Yeah, There's some of motherfucker course. knocking, and we're back. Yeah, you don't have to cut it out. It was perfect. I just said the motherfucker knocking at the door. You muted the mics. Off you went. Rip, rip, back. <laughs> Good. The powers of editing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so th- it was it was disappointing. We have to tell the gee story now. So the like, I found bef- before. Hang on, let me let me let me just like sort of express where I'm coming from before people hear these stories and think like, bro, being a bit of a dick. Maybe I was, but. The, the disappointment came from like the, over, the overarching theme of our gym at this competition was lots of people registered to compete, very few trained to compete. Right? And whether that was because of other things that weren't in their control, which in one, in, you know, in your case it was like you got smashed with work like the, the week before the competition. Uh, you know, one of the other guys, Toby, got, you know, incredibly sick. You know, I mean, 99% of the other people in Toby's situation wouldn't have even, they just would have pulled out of the comp, but he still yeah. turned up, you know. So, he probably shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, he probably shouldn't have. It was pretty dog shit. But because of that overwhelming, like, theme, the disappointment came not – because individuals lost or like let, like your game match in particular, or it wasn't that you lost. I don't really care if you win or lose. It's how I lost. It was just that it was like, man, it, it, it would be like I'm your coach and I'm coaching you at, you know, the 100 meter sprint and I've never once seen you sprint the 100 meters slower than 15 seconds, but all of a sudden in this race, it took you 20 seconds. I'd be exactly like- exactly what happened. It was, it was just like the the disappointment was in the, bro, I'm, I'm watching like one stripe white belt queue in here. Like yeah. it's not even like, like what is going on? So I can't remember exactly how it played out because I it, it was like it's when something, you know, when something's so traumatic, memory. you kind of forget it. But I remember after the match, when you came out of the the- competition area mm. I, like i remember i couldn't even like i couldn't even do, do my usual like man it would be okay i was just like bro what like, the f- you literally the first thing you said what the fuck was that did i <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're like bro what the fuck was that that was terrible did i <laughs> yeah. oh, fuck that's pretty harsh <laughs> i think so i think i remember man. saying something like man like it's okay, like, you know, you can't always have good days or something no, like that. you said that, that at the end. Yeah, like, no, after, yeah. yeah, I was like, said, yeah. after we initially spoke, you said, you know, sometimes you have bad days or something along those lines. So yeah, like, but I, I think I must have said something like, man, yeah. like, the, you know, that's like not you. Like, that was, it was, terrible. That was terrible. Like, yeah. you, to, to, you to know, be fair, I, we, I think we need happened. to fill in what happened. Like, 
in a nutshell, I, I got a takedown. Um, it wasn't the best, but I got the takedown. Um, oh, sorry. I, I shot a takedown, got reversed. So I was on the bottom uh, in half guard. I then got a Kimura grip, used that to sweep the guy. Yeah, that's Once right. I was on top, man, I've spoken about my Kimuras before. Like normally I finish them. For whatever reason, I couldn't finish it. And then it went to, he straightened his arm out and I couldn't finish the fucking armbar. Like and the, then the, you got swept back. And then I and got the, swept. And oh the, my God. The and way just, you got swept was back so bad. was like, oh, the, the way you got swept back was essentially, it was actually no different to the the gag in, I don't know which Austin Powers it is, but where the steamroller's slowly coming along. The guy's yeah. like, ah, yeah. it was it like was that. Lazy. It was the it was so slowest bad. sweep. And it was like, you had eight legs and 12 hands you could have posted to not get swept. And yep. you just went, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know why it happened. Then we got to the, he was in side control and he, he did some sort of like arm bar with, with his legs. Like he was in like a scarf hole position, chucked my leg in between his legs and armbarred me. And I, I didn't respect that position. I thought I was still going to, you know, come out on top. It was the most disappointing thing. I honestly, to this still now, I know what happened, but I don't, I don't fully understand why. And it was very disappointing. Cause it wasn't your first game match, was it? No, no, like no. The, the first one was tough, but I like, I won, won. Eight, yes. eight points to Neil. I yeah. So it wasn't like you kid. weren't yet like in the zone. So no, I was in the zone. You had already like, had a match. Yeah. I was in, I was, I was in the zone before it was like, I was like looking at the boys. Like, I'm going to fucking murder this kid. And um, yeah, I just, I just fucked up. It was a massive fuck up. I should have finished the Kamara realistically. It should have ended there. It didn't. Um, and I think whatever. even the initial uh, getting reversed from the takedown or whatever happened, I can't remember how that happened, but I think even that shouldn't have happened. Cause yeah. I remember, I remember feeling disappointed very early on yeah. in the match before like, oh, the Kamara. Yeah, I remember yeah. like right at the start being like, Oh my God. Yeah. And I, and I, I like came back with the Kamara, but anyway, so that ended the Gi run pretty quickly. Um, and then Nogi came around and I was like, no, <laughs> yeah, we need yeah. to. I, yeah. And I think that's why then yeah. when you were in that rear naked choke in the Nogi, I was Never just gonna like, bro, you just gave your back like yeah. straight what the away. Fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like really early. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I mean, fuck it. I got out. <laughs> yeah. You got the gold. Yeah. You did redeem yourself in, yeah. in the Nogi. Yeah. And I mean, I think if anyone's thinking that I, I'm, I'm being a bit harsh, I, I say quite often, I, try to I think even without thinking about it I I try to imitate the way Fabio coached me or coaches students because it's the way I I was brought up mm. and I've said previously what makes him such a good coach is his ability to coach different people in different ways and in ways that will get the most out of them so there's certain students that that exact same scenario could have played out and I wouldn't have said to them, bro, what the fuck was that? You know, I, you know, it's not like I necessarily had this massive, you know, glimpse into the future and know that those words in that moment are going to make you better. But I just know that like the relationship we have and how you approach your jujitsu and whatever, like, yeah, there might be some, I mean, I didn't need to say anything for you to be, feel disappointed. You were disappointed you're just in saying, yourself. You're just telling like, me what I'm thinking. But yeah, I mean, I think with, you you don't need me to to sugarcoat it or not tell it how it is. Like you can take that and I think almost it's going to give you fuel to the fire, whereas for other people it's not going to benefit them. Mm. So, yeah, it might sound a bit harsh, but I don't think for you it was incredibly harsh. Uh, I just want to clear that up because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to like say to, you know, uh, the, that two-stripe white belt, you know, they just fought for the first time. You go to her and say, what the fuck? Yeah, well, like, <laughs> like for example, Sim fought, right? Sim's one of our students who um, had her first competition and he's really new to jujitsu as well. And even the, like it surprised me even when she said she registered for the competition. I was like, oh man, she's getting stuck straight in. Mm. And she had a gi match, which she lost on points and then a no gi match, which I missed because I was coaching someone else. But I believe it was again, just losing on points. And, you know, it was her first competition. She's still, I mean, Sim has one or two stripes on her white belt, like still really new. She started just before our most recent lockdown. So then lockdown obviously stopped everything. Mm -hmm. So only been training a matter of months. 
And, you know, I went up to Sim and it didn't matter that she lost. Like, I remember saying to her, I was like, Sim, man, I'm so proud of you. Like, you did so well. Like, that is awesome. Like, Yeah, but the difference is this is my, like, seventh comp. The second no, that's, the blue yeah, belt, that, you know. of course. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's different. Totally. You know. Totally. I've already podiumed at, at blue belt already. So it's like, come on, bro. What the fuck? And, yeah. And, I mean, totally and agree. Toby was the same. I didn't say the same to Toby, but, like, you know. Toby had had a week off oh, due man, to being real sick. sick. He was and sick. even when he turned up, he was like, oh, I'm like maybe 80%. Like, that, and yeah. so we had no gas tank. And yeah. he even said, he was like, oh man, like I actually didn't feel that bad. And I said to him, with all due respect, Toby, as someone who trains with you and watches you train, yep. you might not have felt it, but compared to regular Toby, yep. you were moving like a sloth, bro. Like yeah. you were so slow. Yeah. Like it might've felt like you were quick because your point of reference at the moment is warped. But you know, so yeah, I was disappointed, but like not really because he had unfortunately got really sick before the competition. I was impressed he turned up, mm. but I was disappointed just in the sense that like, ah, oh, like, you know, yeah, no one goes into a competition 100% feeling perfect, but Toby would have destroyed yeah. that dude. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the same guy that put me in the rear naked choke in, um, in the Nogi match. Oh, well, I'm glad you got one back. Yeah. Boy. Uh, and, so, and the compa- I will, I will say this, and then we'll move on. Like I suppose to the to the episode, but I will say this: <laughs> yeah. the guy that um, everyone's like, but what do I do after? Yeah, <laughs> uh, we've already been here. But uh, one more little little fucking comp story is the guy that I fought in the first round in Gi. He was the teammate of the guy that Toby fought because me and Toby were on the opposite end of the bracket. Right. Because these right, guys right, were right. teammates, they were as well. Right. And he he said something to the other guy in passing as he was coming off the mat. He was like, oh, leave some for the rest of us after he just beat Toby. Only just, but like two points or whatever. Oh, yeah. It was like- ex- It was close. Yeah, exactly. Considering yeah. Toby was sick, he would have schooled the kid. Yeah. And I heard that and I was just like, I'm about to fucking pump you. <laughs> like, I just got real mad Sick. and just wanted to like fucking smash this kid. Like, Cause you're like, Toby's my boy. Yeah, Toby's my boy, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> this guy was like super arrogant or whatever, thought he was gonna like, you know, school me. And and as I, I passed him with the same pass, like the second time, all I heard was him just go, fuck. <laughs> like, ah, yeah. so good. Yeah. When you feel someone Give break up. in a in a match. Oh, he, he broke pretty, in the last like minute. It was just like- satisfying. Nah, it's over, bro. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so what do we do after? Well, I mean, in short, you want to learn from from any mistakes in the competition. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, like even when you win, you can learn from your mistakes. And I just want to give a few examples as to what happened in this competition and and how like how you can take that back to your training and learn. When when you do things in a competition, the consequences are much higher. So any mistakes you make cut deeper. So they're easier to fix. And and I mean that like when you miss, you know, when you take someone's back and they escape your back control uh, in training, you kind of don't really care. Like, you know, it's not, you're not probably going to think about it for that long post-training. But in a competition, if you take someone's back, you don't finish them and then they escape and they win the match like that, you know, you'll be thinking about that for weeks how like old mate with the with the rear naked choke on me he would be thinking about that and as a result if he listens to this episode no (laughs) like as a result he's probably going to go back to his gym and spend a good chunk of time improving his ability to retain the back and finish from the back Mm -hmm. and he'll get better at it so you know sometimes you've got to you know, the, the, the classic saying, oh, you only lose if you lose the lesson. Mm-hmm. Right? You definitely want to learn from those mistakes. Uh, another example was Samir, you know, one of our blue belts who's a really competent judo guy. He's, for all of his competitions, this was his first at blue belt, but pretty much 99% of the people he tr- trains with or competes against don't train judo. Or if they do, there may be a white belt in judo. He's a brown belt in judo. So like he pretty much can always get the takedown or he's very comfortable on his feet. And he got taken by surprise against his opponent who, <laughs> you know, happened to be that 0.1% dude who is like a four-time Australian champion in judo and a European medalist in judo. And like, a, a, you know, so not only is he could go toe-to-toe with Samir in judo, but like uh, that took him by surprise and Samir got taken down and everything. So the lesson Samir has learned was essentially not to underestimate your opponent. You know, you don't know 
Like it's not someone you know so you can prepare for them. You don't know what they're good at or bad at. You've just got to, you know, assume that they know what they're doing and respect whatever it is they go for. So that's why sometimes in comps I'll, I'll yell out to students like, man, break that collar grip. You've got to respect that collar grip because you don't know they might be have the one of the best loop chokes in in the country, right? Like you've got to, you got to respect your opponent. So the lesson he's taken away is not to underestimate your opponent. Another one of the students, um, Sophia, she did incredibly well. She was definitely like the standout of the day for her. She won her weight division, which was really important for her because she had gone a long time just constantly getting silver. So like it was really it was really special and important for her to win gold at weight. And then she got silver in absolute as well. Uh, and then she fought really well in nogi as well. Um, so, but there's still things to be improved. There were matches we, she won where she could have finished the fight earlier. There was one match where she lost, where she had the girl in a fully extended arm bar. And yeah, I mean, I've already that. addressed the issue with her, like, you know, showing why you know, the mistake the she made mm -hmm. to not finish it. So the it's not too difficult to think what to do after a comp, right? After a competition in general, well, anything, oh, what mistakes did I make? Well, man, like you should be able to, you, you'll know because it hurts, right? Even if you won. I was re-watching recently the last time I competed and I won. I, you know, my fight was... Um, essentially swept him, passed him, mounted him, submitted him. And you go, oh man, perfect. It's like, no, but before that I, you know, entered in on a collar drag, picked up the single leg, but couldn't finish it. You know, or there was a moment I could have taken his back, didn't, you know, so there's still always something that you can improve upon. And competition magnifies that. So post-competition, you always want to go back to the gym and while it's fresh, like fix those mistakes, mm -hmm. right? And- Hopefully you have a coach who can help you fix those and will help you fix those. I've already done with Alex, helped him, you know, fix the DAS choke he missed and what was the other thing? Um, Sophia's armbar. Sophia's armbar. Uh, the lack of ability for people to get into leg, leg entanglements. We've already been drilling that. So, And we used to do this in Brazil. Fabio used to do this after the Worlds every year. He would come back and say this is a, a bit different because it wasn't necessarily to the individual. It was more f the the post-competition jiu-jitsu's evolution as a whole mm. he would go this is what people are doing this is what the top you know blue belts and purple belts are doing you know and let's look at this so i remember the team as a whole figuring out bearing bolos like when it was like the first worlds where people were doing bearing bolos like at you know the in the gold medal matches and i think it was when the meows and keenan were purple belts and that's pretty much when even though the Mendez brothers were already doing it, that's probably when it exploded, when Keenan and the Meow brothers were purple belts doing it. And I remember post-Worlds, us kind of all, you know, no one really knew how to do it. Black belts didn't know how to invert. It wasn't really a thing and figuring it out all together. Same with 50-50 and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so be silly for you to invest the time to compete and then not go, okay, what where were my holes, what was wrong there, and how do I fix it? I think you've spoken about in the past that a competition, particularly for a white belt, is worth like three months of training or, or you know, whatever, some anecdotal time. Like one competition is worth like months of training for, yeah. for a white belt. However, I'd, I'd argue that it's only the case if then you take the lessons from that comp and apply them. Yeah, I'd say so. One of my white belt comps, and ironically, this the same guy um, listens to the podcast, uh, Shout and, out to that guy. Yeah. Do you know and his name? Isaac. Isaac. And uh, he he also, um, we competed at White Belt. Unfortunately, we didn't get to compete again um, because I lost my gi match. Uh, he didn't compete in no gi this time. Um, but he put <laughs> me in a triangle. Yeah. No, nah, <laughs> I, I really want to, I, I want to, he, he won. He won the gi. So good on, oh, good nice. on him. Congrats. Um, so 
in AJP, we fought um, twice. This was last year when I was a white belt. We were both white belts, obviously. We fought in gi and then we fought in no gi in the finals. Uh, he beat me both times. <laughs> uh, but in the in the gi, he put me in a triangle and the video is on my YouTube and it's titled like World long, World's Longest Triangle or something ridiculous. And I was in this triangle, I shit you not, for like nearly two minutes. And I said to him, I was like, hey- It took you like two hours to recover afterwards. Oh you were with man, the paramedics was, yeah, and everything. Yeah, I nearly passed out, hey. It's, uh, yeah, it's funny. Like you didn't go out, but it was such an extended period of time of with lack, lack, of of, oxygen, lack of yeah. oxygen and blood to the brain. It yeah. almost would have been better if I did go out because it's kind of like I was yeah. denied oxygen for so long and I got a little bit back and then I was denied and then I yeah. got a little bit back and we're talking about that and um, and I said that after that experience that I, I went away and workshopped getting out of triangles for ages like yeah. just spent like it was like an obsession like now I you're quite be, quite tricky to triangle yeah yeah i mean the, i've been triangled only a couple of times in the last like fucking you know this year even yeah. or last few months even into last year and there's a couple of guys that really specialize in triangles that can still do it still get me um but yeah i'd like to think that my triangle defense has come a long way yeah. uh, and it's thanks to him and thanks to that that match yeah and so that was more than three months of training for me that was like years of training in that specific area yeah it's so, gonna be the same with this comp yeah so you know the uh, an ass kicking can be valuable <laughs> i guess right but yeah. yeah you know i don't want to want people to think that yeah, there's nothing to be learned even when you win cron gracie said you know i think we did an episode a while ago about being your, your own harshest critic and when people say, oh, you're too hard on yourself, I think that's bullshit, man. And I probably- Yeah, we did do I an episode probably that, yeah. spoke about this in that episode that, you know, Cron would say something like, oh, if I tap my training partner in five minutes, I'm not satisfied, then I want to do it in four minutes. And then if I do it in four, then I want to do it without using my left hand or yeah. like, you know, there's you can always, always get better, right? Obviously, you know, you, know, you, you don't always have to- be hating on yourself but you should always be looking looking to improve mm. but what about if it's your first comp i mean that was the title of the episode i've done my first comp oh now, yes i like, <laughs> <laughs> totally forgot <laughs> half an hour in yeah all those people um well i think you entered at the start do another comp so <laughs> <laughs> depending how your matches went maybe there's not a lot from a technical point of view that you need to improve upon. Well, obviously there is, but like maybe there's not a lot of takeaways to improve technically. Like if you were the, the better person on the day and you just like ran through your division and you, it, you didn't get an opportunity to really reveal areas or issues, very rare that that's going to happen. But if that's the case, then go again until it is revealed. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe you went in and like that, blue belt dude who you tapped in 20 seconds, yeah. you know, there's not, you know. He needs to work on his stand up. So I, did, <laughs> so I tell him that right now. Like you let me snap him down really easily. Just saying. You know, like you could, you could look at that, but if it was your first competition, now you're going to go into your second one. And a lot of the valuable experience you gained from that first ever comp, or let's just say those first handful, but especially the first one, when everything is new, Whereas at least now, the second time you compete, you've made weight before. Yeah, you've consistent. driven to the competition before. Yep. You've, uh, yeah, you've, uh, you've checked in and weighed mm -hmm. in. You've stood in the bullpen. You've yep. walked out to the mat. You've shaken hands with the the referee. So like all it's this stuff, things. Is, little things, yeah, yeah, it'd still be new because you've only done it once before. But one time is one time more than no times exactly and, do, 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 do. and if you compete in the same area or even just in the same country like you know or the same region i should say um like i see the exact same referees all the time i see the same teams i see the same coaches on other teams i see the same competitors like i talk to the same people it's even the the, the same guys at the you know the screens and the the officiants it's ev everything's like similar particularly if you've done enough you've worn the the extra belt a few times you've worn the like the little cuff on your your leg you've You've stepped out on the mats. You've fucking knuckles high five. You've you've felt how intense it is. You know what's coming. You know yep. what to expect. It's not new. So now you can focus more on the actual match itself because exactly. the, the the first comp is everything is brand new. So mm -hmm. that that whole the whole competition experience is a learning experience. Yeah. So it's hard to focus on the match when you when you don't you've never been to a comp like some people are you know, their first time in a competition 
is also their first time competing. So you've never even heard the sounds that, are, mm. you know, the atmosphere that takes place in, a, you know, arena or wherever the competition's set up. So, you know, now going in for your second comp, you've got all that experience under your belt, mm. you know, and uh, you can focus more on the match. Yeah. So like that, that's definitely, I wouldn't look too far into it if you just did your first competition don't stress too much as in like okay how do i do like you've already got all this experience that you don't realize how valuable it is mm -hmm. that's going to help you in that second comp focus more on the match and uh, some things might stand out more you know maybe for for you it was particularly hard to make weight so now you know that next time like oh man right i start my diet a little earlier go up in weight yeah or go up in weight or maybe you i've learned that lesson over the time like i i know where i belong now in in weight classes like the weight class i'm at right now is exactly where i belong yeah like i've tried to cut twice to the one below Nah, it's not for me yeah yeah i right, can you even can though i can like I, I can do it mechanically i know how to do it in theory but it's just not the right decision so yeah. little things like that yeah all, that all adds up and you know, maybe maybe you gassed out super hard. Like that's mm. definitely a big one people don't realize. I get so many students post first competition, like come to me and essentially like, you know, to some degree apologize for complaining about when when training in the gym was hard. Mm. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, so now you see when I'm trying to get you to do competition training and you're like wanting to throw up, it's still like nothing compared to the intensity and the yeah. adrenaline of a competition. It's, so it's when weird. you thought I was pushing you hard, like I'm, I'm trying to do you a favor, bro. Mm. You know? Yeah. That's, that's a recurring theme. It's really interesting in my gi just on Sunday, in my gi matches, I cared a lot about the result. Like, cause I went in, I thought well, I was going to run, look, I'm going to be honest. I thought I was going to run through the bracket. Pre competition. You even said, uh, that you were focused more on your gi matches. Cause you felt that that's where, at the moment, your jujitsu sort of been swinging. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it has because that's where. Which my is is funny because right as I was leaving, <laughs> I walked past Jeremy, and as long time listeners will know, Jeremy Paul Skinner, old he's friend, on, who, on the episode number thirty one, I think, I don't somewhere know, around there. But yeah, like a very well known no gi guy and old friend of yours, and I walked past him. I was like, "I oh, probably see you, Jeremy." Blah blah blah. He was like, "How'd Kieran go?" And I said, "Oh, you know he." <laughs> He lost his gi, but he got gold in the no gi. <laughs> and he goes, oh, so he won the division that matters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, Jeremy, exactly. But it's so funny because in the gi, I was so convinced that I was going to run through it. Like nothing against my competitors, very tough competitors on the day, but I was just convinced that I was going to do well. Like I was going to make the podium at, in some capacity and to get stopped like that, you know, we've already spoken about it, but it was, it was shattering, right? Come no gi, I really didn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I don't, like I cared, but I didn't at the same time. I was like, this is no gi. I'm just going to go. I don't give a fuck if I win or lose. I'm just going to go out and I'm going to roll my heart out. Like I'm just going to, you know, tr like tr roll with this person, whoever it is, my competitors to the best of my ability and whatever happens, happens. And I wasn't as nervous. I didn't get as gassed. Like, it, don't worry. I put it all out on the line on each match, but I didn't get as gassed. Like I felt good. Uh, you know what I mean? Like even yeah, after the final, I was still fucked, but I felt better than I did yeah, after the, the final was a tough close one that was ref's decision as well wasn't it, it? was wasn't it came it? down to ref decision right in the last like 10 seconds that's right like yeah, the, yeah you were up an advantage and yep. he almost took your back and with I, like, like 10 over the yeah, top with like yep. 10 seconds to go and he got an advantage for it yep and i remember seeing that and, oh man it's stressing me so hard it was like sophia's final in yeah. the d but i mean sophia's one was more stressful because like i said i was really invested in you know, that she had gotten silver for mm. so long and it was really important yeah. to, for her to, to, to win, mm. like, um, you know, just to like break that sort of almost mental barrier, yeah, that, that cycle, yeah, yeah, that yeah, mental that rut that you're in. Yeah. And yeah, I remember hers was tied points and advantages as well. She and won on the ref's decision as well. Yeah. Which yeah. like, which I knew she was going to, because she was way more aggressive. Like the other chick barely attacked like at all you know, the whole match, like nothing, responsive. whereas, yeah, yeah, whereas Sophia was a pushing the pace, attacking the whole time. But, you know, in any sport, you know, the old, like, don't leave it in the ref's hands, like 100%. refs make bad calls, you know? And so the, man, the stress of, of, I was like, oh my God, if this ref like 
gives the decision to the other chick. Like yeah. I was so stressed about it. Yeah. But then luckily, because it was clear as day that Sophia would get the rest decision, but there's still that's, that. That's Refs make bad calls. I don't think it was as clear in my match. It could have gone either way. I think, no, yeah, yours was could have. I think what was in my favor is I was winning on advantage just before the end maybe. But then again, the guy had two points up on me. Like there was yeah, no points. You never scored. know, like some refs will like, you know, lean towards whoever like scored that last advantage. Yeah, you know, that's, it's like that's it's then point. swung to in their favor. Yeah, and that's in, that's interesting because in the last minute was when all the points and advantages were scored. Like we were doing stand up, we we're back and forth. We we're just wrestling for like six minutes straight. It was a wrestling match really. There was yeah. barely any jujitsu. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I don't know if they, cause I don't think there was at all. Oh, uh, there was one point where I nearly took his back. Right. And he fucking, he reversed and I ended up, he was in my close guard and I just stood up. I was like, nah, fuck this, I'm wrestling. Yeah. And then we we went back to wrestling. Um, but yeah, it was really back and forward. Um, I, hadn't, I, I don't think I've had a match like that before, but it was interesting. I yeah. remember at one point in it, like I think, yeah, because he scored the points first, didn't and he? And you said, you said, I remember very distinctly, he's like, you got fucking ground to make up. And I, yeah. I like the, the, yeah, the I rem- image of your disappointed face was flashing in my mind. And I was like, I remember I was like, bro, you have to fucking score. Yeah. And I remember you just went like, you just went steam train. Yeah. As soon as I said that you just went wham. And yeah. like, it wasn't even like a shot. It was like a rugby tackle. Yeah. You yeah. just went kaboom yeah. and took him down and got the <laughs> points. And I was yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. And that's when I nearly took his back, but it yeah. didn't happen. And then, and then we recessed stood up again. And we're back on the feet. And fuck, man, last last like fifteen seconds, it was decided. It was crazy. Uh, yeah, and I, but you know whether it's your first comp or second comp, if you're listening to this episode, you know relatively close to when it comes out. What I said to people in the gym yesterday was, man, like it's so that str- was addressed to me. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, it's straight, it's straight back to it. Like you know, if your comp was particularly difficult and you need a day off to like rest the body or whatever, okay, I'm you know not going to tell you not to listen to your body, but you know, it's not the end of the competition season. And now you're like, oh, I did a comp, and yeah, now I'll have like a couple of weeks off. No, man, like yeah. it's just think if you were a player on a football team. You know, like you pretty much have a, a match every every weekend or every mm. second weekend or whatever. Like we're still in the season. Mm. So it's not like you now get to take one or two weeks off or something. It's not the end of the season. It's not like, okay, Worlds is over, which usually happens in the middle which of the year. Which is the pinnacle. Like you have multiple like comps leading up to Worlds. Exactly, right? right? Yeah, I totally get it. So, you, you know, post-Worlds, people will often take a couple week bender and then the no yeah. season starts, yeah. right? So it's like- Okay, we're in March at the moment. Man, it's like on to the next one. Yeah, if you needed your one or two days off to recover the body, that's cool, but it's straight back to it. Like, yeah. you know, we're in the middle of the season. Mm. Next comp is just around the corner. Like, let's go. Particularly if you lost in the first 20 seconds. Yeah, you then you got the next day. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Good to go. You know? I th- yeah, I think it depends on like how intense your matches were and how many you had. And only you will know that. But um, no, I'll know. I was there. Yeah, you were there. I don't know. Oh, I know you're there. You took your man. You took one and a half rest days. I trained yesterday. Yeah, half. You just did one class yesterday. I did. So you had one and a half days rest. Yeah, day. We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awkward moments on the on jiu jitsu. Um, yeah. So I mean. You've done your first comp. Now what? Fucking do another one. Just get back to training. Um, It depends on like, take the lessons that you've learned from it, you know, and um, everything is going to come together and improve your jiu-jitsu. That's what competitions are about. That's why people that have been in the sport plug them so hard. And even, even me, I mean, I've only done seven or so comps, but every single one I can point to something that I took away from it, a lesson that I've applied, a lesson that I've learned. And sometimes a lesson that you need to relearn, but you know, like don't get your back taken. Yeah. When you take them down, stay on top. Yeah, don't go for random fucking Uchimata takedowns throws that, you that you never, never, ever, ever do. <laughs> like, I, I think I saw you, every, you like, went for, of people hitting it. You went for one of those in the final of the Nogi. Yeah, and nearly And got he fucked. almost took yep. your back. Almost-ish. Yeah. Like, not almost as in- We shot. scrambled. Yeah. We but scrambled. there was a bit and you managed to square up. I remember yep. being like- Don't do that shit. Why the fuck are you trying that? I don't know. Like, you never do that. I know. I, know. I know? don't know. It, I, I think I saw a whole bunch of people doing it that day in my division. I'm like, oh yeah, that looks cool. <laughs> that looks fun. It's the same with like a foot sweep. There's this one guy that I think he's got a judo background 
um, in my division. And he was like foot sweeping people. He was Uchimata throwing them. He was like doing judo shit. I'm like, oh yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, you said you ended up just kicking everyone in the shins. Yeah, I kicked this dude the shit and like so hard. I'm like, oh fuck, sorry, man. Like mid, like <laughs> mid comp. But he's like, oh, all good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice <so> guy. Good. <laughs> uh, awkward. But um, yeah, so I think <laughs> hopefully this episode, you got something out of it, like in terms of, you know, giving you some direction and, and maybe helping you deal with like what to do with all this information that you have from your last comp. Obviously yeah. everything's floating around your mind. You know, hopefully we put you down the right direction on what to do with it. But yeah, I guess the moral of the story is back on the horse. Off you go. Get on that bike. Pocket top, bitches. What? It's pocket top. It's like the, it's in Portuguese, like what they say for like, you know, if you're riding a horse, like pocket top, pocket top, pocket top, pocket top. Oh. Like <laughs> <laughs> <Pocket on. laughs> That's so weird. Well, how how would you Pocket make that on. sound in in English? What would you say, like? Oh, you'd like click, like I don't want to do it. But it's like, <laughs> 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 on that note, pockets off, uh, bitches. Pockets off, bitches. <laughs>